Hello friends and welcome to the tutorial on handling large data files and processing them. Up until now, we have covered how to create plots, how to read data from files and process it. In this tutorial, we shall use these concepts and some new ones to solve a problem. We have a file on our desktop named sslc.txt. It contains records of students and their performances in one of the state secondary board examinations. It has 180,000 lines of records. We are going to read this and process the data from the file. We can see that the content of the file by double clicking on it. It might take some time to open since it is quite a large file. Please do not edit the data. This file has a particular structure. Each line in the file has a set of 11 fields separated by semicolons. Consider a sample line from this file. The following are the fields in any given line. Region code, which in this case is A. Roll number, in this case 015163. Name, in this case Joseph Raj S. Marks of 5 subjects, English 83, Hindi 42, Maths 47, Science AA in this case, which means that the candidate was absent for the exam. And Social 72, followed by Total Marks, in this case 244, followed by a pass fail field. This field is blank here because the particular candidate was absent for a particular exam. If not, it would have been either P or F, withheld again blank in this case because the result was not withheld. Let us now look at a problem that which we wish to solve. Draw a pie chart representing the proportion of students who scored more than 90% in each region in science. This is the result we expect. In order to solve this problem, we need the following machinery file reading which we have already looked at parsing which we have looked at partially dictionaries which we shall be introducing here and finally plotting which we have been doing all along since this file is on our desktop let's navigate to the desktop by typing cd space desktop let's get started by typing ipython space hyphen pylab let's start off first with dictionaries earlier we discussed lists briefly Back then, we just created lists and appended items into them. For example, x equal to open square bracket 1 comma 4 comma 2 comma 7 comma 6 close square brackets. In order to access any element in the list, we used its index. Index starts from 0. For example, x of 0 gives 1 and x of 3 gives 7. But using integer indexes isn't always convenient. For example, Consider a telephone directory. We give it a name and it should return a corresponding number. A list is not well suited for such problems. Python offers dictionaries which are far better for such problems. Dictionaries are just key value pairs. For example, d equal to open flower brackets, open quotes, single quote, png, colon, within single quotes, image, comma, within single quotes, txt, colon, within single quotes txt text comma within single quotes py colon within single quotes python enter and that is how we create a dictionary dictionaries are created by typing in the key value pairs within flower brackets type d and hit enter d is a dictionary the first element in in the pair is called the key and the second is called the value the key always has to be a string while the value can be of any type. Lists are indexed by integers while dictionaries are indexed by strings. They are indexed using their keys as shown. D open square brackets within quotes txt close square brackets and hit enter gives you the corresponding value of that particular key. Similarly D of within quotes png gives image. The dictionaries can be searched for the presence of a certain key by typing within quotes the key name which is py in this case in d. It returns true. Let us try for one more case within quotes jpg in d. Since jpg is not a key in dictionary it returns false. Please note that keys and not values are searched. If you want, you can try one more case and check out within quotes TEXT 
in D. As you can see, it returns false, even though the text is a value in the given dictionary. To obtain the list of all keys in a dictionary, type D dot keys, open close parenthesis. Similarly, D dot values, open close parenthesis, is used to obtain the list of all values in a dictionary. One more thing to note about dictionaries, in this case D, is that dictionaries do not preserve the order in which the items were entered. The order of the elements in a dictionary should not be relied upon. Let us now move on to parsing and st string processing. As we saw previously, we shall be dealing with lines in of the content of the form as shown. Here, semicolon is a delimiter, that is, semicolon is used to separate the fields. We shall create one string variable to see how we can process it to get the desired output. Line equal to open single quotes a semicolon 015162 semicolon genil space t space p j e n i l space t space p semicolon 081 semicolon 060 semicolon 77 semicolon 41 semicolon 74 semicolon 333 semicolon p semicolon semicolon and close a single quote previously we saw how to split on spaces when we process the pendulum.txt file let us now look at how to split a string into a list of fields based on a delimiter other than space a equal to line dot split within quotes semicolon let us now check what a contains a is a list containing all the fields separately. A of 0 is the region code, A of 1 the roll number, A of 2 the name and so on. Similarly, A of 6 gives the science marks of that particular region, of that particular candidate. So we create a dictionary of all regions with the number of students having more than 90 marks. Let us now start off with writing the code for this. We st first start by creating an empty dictionary called and let us call it science here. Science equal to open close flower brackets. That is how an empty dictionary is created. Now we read the records one by one from the file sslc.txt for record in open open parenthesis within quotes sslc.txt colon and hit enter. Note the indentation of four spaces. We split on each record using the semicolon delimiter and store it in a list by typing fields equal to records record dot split within quotes semicolon. Now we get the region code of a particular region by region underscore code equal to fields of zero dot strip the strip function is used to remove all the leading and trailing white spaces from a given string now we check if the region code is already there in the dictionary by typing if space region underscore code space not in science which is our dictionary here colon and hit enter. Please note this is the structure of the if st uh, statement. Again since the if block is a separate block it is indented by four spaces. When this statement is true we add a new entry to the, to the dictionary with the initial value of 0 and the key being the region code. Signs within square brackets region underscore code equal to 0. Note that this if statement is inside the for loop, so we will have to give additional indentation or in order to come out of the if block, we have to go back to the previous indentation. And then to get the science marks, we type score underscore 
string str equal to fields of 6 since the 6 index number 6 gives the signs marks dot strip again to remove the leading and trailing spaces we check if the student is not absent if score underscore str is not equal to within quotes aa colon hit enter and move on to the next indentation level then we check if his marks are above 90 or not if int of score underscore str is greater than 90 note int gives the integer form of the given string hit enter move on to the next indentation level if the score is greater than 90 we add one value to the value of the dictionary of that region signs of region underscore code plus equal to 1 note that plus equal to increments the value of signs of region code by 1 now hit return twice to exit the for loop by the end of this loop we shall ha have our desired output in the dictionary signs we can check the values of signs by typing signs and hit enter now to create our pie chart we use pi open brackets signs dot values open close brackets comma labels equal to signs dot keys open close parenthesis please observe that the plot has appeared on the screen the first argument to the pi function is the values of of the things that are to be plotted the second is the optional argument which is the used to label the regions title within quotes students scoring 90 percent and above in science by region let us now save this figure save fig within quotes science.png please observe that the figure has been saved on the desktop since we were working on the desktop that brings us to the end of this tutorial we have learnt about dictionaries some basic string passing and plotting pie charts in this tutorial hope you have enjoyed it Thank you.